الحمد لمن هداني لسنة العدنان محمد المختار وسيد الأطهار Right? Allah is what? Allah is omnipotent. Like that is okay. Like sure. That. Right? We understand yeah. omnipotence, right? Everything and all, everything and all things at the same time. Right? Uh, so, so, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qadr, he is able on everything. But we don't say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everything, right? Okay. Like the concept of wahdat uh, al-wujud, what they say, like, like there was nothing and then everything came from Allah in the sense that it's a part of Allah, we as Muslims reject that, right? Fair like enough. we don't say this tree is Allah. Yeah, 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 this yeah. is the makhluk of Allah, right? Allah is Ta'ala, He's above His creation. But Allah, we say about Him what He said in the Quran or what yeah. the Mustafa alayhi salatu salam, the Prophet said about Him. So for example, Allah says, Ar Rahmanu al Arsh istawa, that the Ar Rahman is reclining on, established on His throne. We believe in that, as Allah said, right? Absolutely. Rasulullah salam said, He makes nuzul in the last part of the night. We we believe in that, whatever Allah says about him. But some people get this misconception that as if we are a part of Allah, na'udhu billah, we are slaves of Allah, Allah is our creator. Yes, absolutely. All right, good. So the question that really roots from all of that, right, all right. is stay with me, all right, because it's going to be a bit I'm with you, go it's for it, relax. Right. Right? I got you, rough ride. Now, I believe in like the evolution of like man, evolution of everything. Okay. Right? The growth of it to become from what we are to the next thing because that's the cycle of like life. In a sense. So so let's take it back a second. You, yeah. you said you believe in evolution in the sense that species adapt to their environment. Yes, exactly. Or do you believe that, uh, for example, apes turn into humans? Uh, those are not the same thing, right? Both. Okay, but so when you said that's a fact, the, the uh, theory of evolution, I believe, is a theory. It's not a fact, right? Like scientific but facts. Gravity is a theory too. Exactly. Right? You're right. You're right. And, and I mean, there, 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 there are. There are. I work in the medical device industry, and there are articles written that do not believe in gravity in the way that we see it. Okay. Right. So those are theories. They can be debated, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, but absolutely. we, but we know from the Quran that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created Adam alayhi salam, mm -hmm. right? And we know that Adam alayhi salam was the first man. We know he didn't come from an ape, right? Okay. That's a fact because that's in the Quran, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when we go to a scientific discussion, like let's take to a, 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 a something that we can test in a clinical trial. Well, the adaptation of a species to become another species, mm -hmm. not just adapting to their environment, right? It's not something we can prove in a clinical trial. Okay. For example, if we say that apes, like when I was in school, I was told apes became Neanderthals and Neanderthals became humans, yep. right? You know that little chart they yep. used to have, the ape and then the Neanderthal, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. Now, it's changed. Mm -hmm. Now they say no, there was two species. One were the Neanderthals and they died out and then there was the humans, right? Yep. So these are things scientists are kind of looking at and they're guessing always at. Finding that, that's a part they're of science, changing. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, it's, exactly. It's okay to change because no you problem can never with be that. Like but the Quran right never changes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So when we look at the idea that a species that was like the ape species mm -hmm. turned into humans, yeah. we have no hard scientific facts. Yeah. Right? We don't have anybody in the middle. Like today, we don't see that transition of still going. Right? You don't see any ape that's sitting and reading a newspaper, writing columns, but still mm -hmm. fling poop around, right? Mm -hmm. So you see apes and you see humans, right? Yep. Now there are there are skulls that were discovered and they said this is the this is the missing link and yeah. all of those have been proven to be false. Right? Uh, I don't think yeah, that's they are. what it is. Research it. Right? I don't think that's like it's proven to be false. It's just that there's always going to be a missing link. Right? Excellent. All right. Yeah. So but but those evidences that were mm -hmm. supposed to be the answer, mm -hmm. if you go to Lucy and all of that, those have been proven. There's a book called Darwin's Doubt. You should check it out. And they go through all of these, okay. right? So, so that means we don't, we don't have a scientific fact here, right? Mm -hmm. But we have in the Quran that Allah created insan, yeah. right? So that's something we as Muslims believe, right? Yeah. So whether a different species adapt to their environment, mm -hmm. we as Muslims believe in that. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-bari, right? Mm -hmm. The one who evolves and, and grows and nurtures his, his, his makhluk, right? Mm -hmm. So if there is a creature who needs to reach longer to survive, it's not like it makes the decision. Yeah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them that ability where they have longer necks to reach further away. We yep. believe in that, no problem with that. Mm -hmm. 
But the idea that humans came from apes, we don't have any scientific evidence that can be tested, and it's against the Quran. So. I appreciate that. Good. The I'm reason uh, I'm just gonna steer away from that because right. my it doesn't focus too much on the evolution actually. Okay. Right? The actual evolution piece. Gotcha. It's just that 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 is a process, natural process, which we which we sure. understand. Adaptation that, right? Yeah. We create technology. Right? Sure. And technology builds upon itself, right? Mm, where technology builds on itself? What do you mean? think about what technology was 20 years ago versus where technology is but, now. But we the continue to develop that. Like, we, we, we don't... Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. I we mean, we don't continue. really, like, like, like even AI, we yeah. don't really make it and then it then it just develops everything on its own, right? Yeah. We program yeah. it, we bring the new revs, yeah. we bring, so, yeah. But in, 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 the, in the timeline of it all, sure. there's no reason that that wouldn't happen because... So, so again, that's a hypoth hypothetical, right? Because... It's, it, it's a bit of a hypothetical, Because yes. think of it, right? Like, yeah. like, how long have we been building robots, yeah. right? Not long enough. Quite a bit. I mean, I mean, the early robotic structures, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't it's have... It's not that long. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, I mean, let's say 50 years, um, right? There's a, there's an equation for it, actually, right? Okay. Because, like, it's a, it's a squared equation, right? Okay. So that means that as time passes, the less time you need to make more advancement within it, okay. right? It's a, hyperbol a hyperbolic curve. Right. right, because think about like the way technology, how fast technology moves once things start happening. Right, it took a long time from the industrial revolution to now, right. but it's gotten only faster and faster because you have that source of technology. Sure, to but build I mean, till stuff. today, yeah, it is all humans. Yes, and yes. the brain that Allah gave us for now. For now, right? For now, yeah. So, so this is where my so question leads. can can there a time? Can there be a time? that AI will develop so much that it will develop itself? I don't know, right? It, That's a hypothetical. So, I, I believe that it will because there's no reason that that's a part of what artificial intelligence sure. is, right? Maybe it's a bit of a fear-mongering, right? Where it's like, this is what you see in movies and whatnot, right? right? Uh, but Terminator? There's no reason, but right. there's no reason that it wouldn't get to that point, right? Because it's, it's just continually building. It's a hypothetical, so I can't really it's, answer, right? It's a right? bit of a yeah. hypothetical, right? Yeah. So I guess that my question is a hypothetical right. in that sense because it builds upon that where it's can AI ever reach a point or maybe something that we create uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be AI but reach something where it builds upon itself to the point of being so omniscient that, that there will be like a law? It, it'll be not omnipotence but the omniscience of a god? No. No. <laughs> and why is that? <laughs> because we are always limited. Yeah, Allah we are limited. No, no, no. Even AI, limited, yeah. even AI, even For a now, robot. But, but think yeah. about it, right? What would it be made out of? Any material you have deteriorates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never deteriorates. Mm -hmm. Right? If you made out of titanium, mm -hmm. centuries will go, it'll deteriorate, right? Mm -hmm. Any any kind of a uh, for example, where would it get its power source from, right? Mm -hmm. When it has a source that is external, again it's not independent. Allah is mm -hmm. Samad. Allah is not in need. If this whole universe was destroyed, Allah will still be there. Yeah. Right? We have not seen and and I do not believe can ever see anything that would even resemble the power of Allah. I don't think we can, right? but like generations. Cannot, like cannot because, generations because, now. because what would be the basis of it? It would be created. Mm -hmm. Allah is uncreated. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What would be the, it would always be in need of other things. Like everything that we've developed needs a power source, whether it's the sun, whether it's electricity, mm -hmm. whether it's whatever, nuclear power. It's always in need. Allah is not in need. Okay. Right? Anything we know is anything that we have created, even the internet, is limited, right? Allah's response is unlimited. Nothing that we can create would know everything, right? Mm -hmm. The rest, hypotheticals, Allah knows best, but from an Islamic perspective, Allah is Samad, not in need of anything. Though every makhluk, no matter how much they develop, they're always in need of Allah. Okay. And okay. even the things that we create are only created from the creation of Allah. Meaning, yeah. even when we make a, a, a new computer, we're taking the elements that Allah gave us and we're just reforming, mm -hmm. right? I just we don't really create. Medicine comes from the tusks of uh, elephants. Okay. Yeah. Many different, yeah, d different things that medicine comes from. I mean, there, I work in the med device industry. I've taken things to pharma and everything that we, even plastics, everything that we bring in comes from something. We don't make anything. You know, we just reform things. We rechange the creation of Allah to make things. Mm -hmm. And Allah has given us. Until today, uh, and again, hypothetical aside, everything that's developed, including the most advanced AI, Sophia, and all of that, right? It's all based on our brains, our programming. We program it. 
even Siri, we program her, right? And everything will always have that limitation that it has a beginning, it has needs, it has shortcomings. Even if, even if the internet learns everything in the world, there is so much in the universe. Look up in the sky at night. Imagine how many malaika, angels, planets, aliens, who knows, right? What all creation of Allah is there? How would it know all that, right? Allah is the one that's always known. Allah's knowledge never goes up and down, right? That is something unique to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why we worship Allah. Mm -hmm. And robots do our bidding, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? For, for now, now, for now, right? Yeah. We'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see when we'll be Terminator, yeah. Yeah. iRobot. I, haven't, we'll uh, I don't think I've seen iRobot, yeah. but uh, yeah, I'm old, man. I, I know the old movies, right? So I'll be like Arnold with that, you know, shotgun out there with those robots. We'll yeah. see, inshallah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, just let them take me. Let them take it, right? Turn you into a battery, right? There's Forget way it. too much work at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may Allah protect us all. Yeah. Man. Oh, Beautiful it. question. I appreciate it. Anything else? Oh, uh, yeah. How do we know that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's one part of the question. Excellent. The second well, is, how do we know that it's been preserved from the time of the Prophet, from the revelation? I to say. Man, those are good questions. All right. So how do we know the Quran is from Allah? There are many ways. The first thing is, who else could it be from? The Prophet Sallallahu by the consensus of historians, could not read or write, right? So how does a man who can't read or write produce a book that was such a linguistic miracle that none of the poets of the time could respond to it? Like you could say maybe somebody else wrote it. Well, if somebody else wrote it, why would they put him up front, right? Like if I come up with some new invention, I'm not gonna give you the credit for it. I'm yeah. gonna like, yo, I wrote it, right? I'm the one, right? So that doesn't make sense, right? And then even if somebody else wrote it, it had certain news that the Prophet would not have known. Like how the water, salt water and sea water touch but don't mix. The Prophet you looked through his whole life, he never went to where salt and sea and fresh water touched. The only places he knew in Arabia were places that were, that were freshwater areas, right? So how would he know that? There are waves underneath the ocean in the Quran, right? It tells us how the Prophet know that. How the womb, the fetus develops in the womb. How would he know that? How that all of the heavenly bodies are in an orbit. I mean, you know, even the Europeans at the time or the philosophers of India and Greek had not figured these things out. But a people in a desert environment that were not philosophers, right? They were not people of technology. The Arabs were not good at this. The only thing they were good at was poetry. And even with that, they couldn't respond to the Quran. So how would a man in the desert know these things, right? How would the Prophet split the moon, right? It's not like if I ask you today, split the moon. Mm -hmm. Even with all your technology, you can't do it, right? If you say maybe it was an illusion for the people of Mecca, well, how did Anas ibn Malik in Medina report it? How did the Bedouins outside of Arabia report it? How did a king in India report it, right? So many, and that's just one of the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. When we look at all of this, we say no doubt that this has to be from Allah. The Prophet ﷺ would not know all the news about, about Al-Quds when he went on Isra al-Mi'raj and he told them, this is where your caravans are. He described Al-Quds to them. How would he know that? He'd never been there. So you have miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle throughout his life. We have a series on the Majd Ribat channel. We're going to go over 3,000 plus reports. Not different incidents, but different reports of miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu So that's how we know this Quran is from Allah. And this is how we know the Prophet Sallallahu is a true Prophet of Allah. Now to your question about how do we know the Quran is preserved. So in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu there were companions, Sahaba, like Uthman ibn Affan, Ubay ibn Ka'ab, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and others. In one of my videos, I've listed, I think, 38 with historic references that can be checked with the chain of narrators, right? That memorize the entire Quran word by word, letter by letter, even with the pronunciations and difference in pronunciations in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? In the time of Abu Bakr radiyallahu in the first Khalifa, the Khalifa was only two and a half years. So this is the first year after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he already had Zayd ibn Thabit compile it in book format that all the Sahaba came to a consensus on. Uthman radiyallahu this is again first generation, right? Same Sahaba. He standardized them, made copies, sent them all over the Ummah. Today in Birmingham, they have pages of the Quran that have been carbon dated to the end of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the beginning and they give you a range, right? That if you look at the middle, it's the end of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu to the beginning of the Khilafah of Abu Bakr radiyanhu. That has been carbon dated, Surah Taha and part Surah Kahf, that you can read and read the Quran that we have today and it reads the same.
right? And we have the Sun'a Quran manuscripts, and we have Hufaz that memorized the Quran in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu that taught it to the Sahaba, that taught it to their, their students and their students till our time, and we can show you the chain all the way back. And that's why the whole Muslim Ummah agrees on the Quran, right? Shia, Sunni, whatever sect people may want to make, Everybody agrees we have the same Quran, starting Al-Fatiha, ending with Surah Nas. Even if we have different ways of recitation, we all agree on the Mus'haf of Osman Radian. So that's how we know it has been preserved. Easy. I got you. What else? Because you always think, like, because Muhammad was illiterate. So it's just like, how does, how, you know, how does that, when, when you play, like, you know, that telephone game, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just lose Exactly, lose exactly. Things, right? And so that like is the amazing thing, right? Yeah. If you go to Bangladesh, if you go to China, and you get a Quran off the shelf, read it, right? You will see it the same as the one here. Because the Sahaba, they didn't do it like one just said to the other one said. They all memorized and read it to the Prophet ﷺ and read it to each other and revised and checked. And that is from the hikmah of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, why Allah sent the Prophet ﷺ in that time. Because the Arab were excellent memorizers. They weren't good at technology, they weren't good at other stuff, but they were excellent memorizers. They would memorize thousands in the Asr of Jahaliyyah, in the time of ignorance, they would memorize thousands of lines of poems where they would from memory yeah. you know that's one thing they were excellent at so the Sahaba was very easy for them to memorize the Quran right and many of the Sahaba they were literate like Umar Radian so they would they were Amr ibn As and others so they would write it down so Zayd ibn Thabit when he was collecting he said I want written manuscripts and from memory two witnesses for each ayah so that it could never be lost in translation or yeah. one verse here and there. Alhamdulillah, Allah bless us with this. Yeah. Um, earlier you'd mentioned that there's linguistic miracles in the Quran. Sure. Can you tell me a little bit more about... Uh, I mean, this is a big subject, yeah. but for example, if you look at the numbers of times that certain things are mentioned in the Quran, and there are ulema that have written books on this, so how night and day and life and death and so on have been mentioned they there are amazing miracles there right the other linguistic miracles we have in the quran is that a man who couldn't read or write brought such a work that the poets could not respond to they couldn't even come up with 10 verses the quran challenged them bring 10 there is like musaylim al-kazab the false prophet he tried it's laughable right Till today, when we study Arabic grammar, I studied like Alfi Ibn Malik and hard, like higher level books. We go back to the Quran to understand Arabic grammar. Like, see, these are things that are linguistically would not have been possible for illiterate man, right? Yeah. Till today, we have many verses that have an amazing miracle in the way they're organized, right? And how, which names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned at the end of which names, right? Yeah. There are many words that are mentioned in ways that are miraculous. I mean, I'll have to go deep into this, but uh, there are there is a book. Uh, I forgot the name of it. A recent scholar wrote it, which just looks at those ayat that are similar, and why there are differences in how they come together. Like, how would somebody put all this together? Right? If you look at even the the aspects of science that are linguistically shown, right? For example, when we look at uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used different words for different stages of the child's development, right? Mm -hmm. How would you know all of that as a man in a, in a desert, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, even the word, I heard this, and I want to know if this is true or not. Sure. The word uh, that was used to describe the sperm, right? the word itself meant like not just flowing, but self-projecting, like the sperm, and now science sure. confirms that yeah. you know, sperm has its own, it's like it's a projectile pushing right. itself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there yeah. are many, and we have uh, a book, I don't know if you have this already, but this oh, has, uh, yeah, so take this with you. This has a little chapter that talks about some of the linguistics and scientific miracles in the Quran. Um, you know, Thank and, you. and there are many doctors like Dr. Miros Burkai who did studies on this and they were atheists and became Muslims and they wrote books on this. And alhamdulillah, I mean, even me, like I work in the med device industry. And, you know, I was talking to one of the, my co-workers who's a researcher, I mean, very amazing, uh, Dr. Ecker, I mean, worked for Abbott, developed a, uh, a, a new technology called Eridica that uh, does infectious disease uh, identification faster and all that. So amazing person. And I was talking to him about the ayah of Quran that everything uh, that is living is from water, mm -hmm. right? 
-hmm. and and he was shocked, right? And he took, he, 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 I gave him a Quran, and he came back to me. He goes, there is no way Muhammad would have known this, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He goes, because today when we look at the cell and the makeup of the cell and how much of it is water and the development, we know every living cell, its, it's, it's base composure is water, right? He goes, but how could a man on a desert, there's no way he would have known this, right? So even like things like this, they are their signs to the truth of Islam. And then we have many other miracles. I mean, that's just one type. Like even if you look at, uh, like we have a series right now on the Majd Riba channel about the life of the Prophet Wasallam, and we're talking about the different miracles that happened before his birth and we have eyewitness accounts people that saw these people that documented we can verify right from even non-Muslim historians that have documented like Hindu historians and, and Portuguese and so on about the kings that saw the splitting of the moon and things these are all signs for the people that have vision yani people who want to see the truth people want to make themselves blind they make themselves blind but then Allah doesn't need anybody. We are in need of Allah. Is it true that the, the term kufr itself doesn't mean just disbelief, but it's, it's more like rooted with covering up? Yeah, kafara, the yeah. root word, means to cover. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, like somebody who knows. So uh, a farmer could be called, linguistically be called a kafir because he puts a seed and covers it, right? But the shari' term, like sharia, we mean it to a disbeliever because in everybody's heart they know the truth. Right? But they cover it up, right? Like when you, when, you, when you look at yourself, right? Imagine, like right now, if, uh, if I told you this phone, nobody developed it, right? This phone that you're looking at, over billions of years, grains of sand came together and made it the way it is. Nobody programmed it, Apple, Samsung, nobody, right? You know in your heart that's not true. You will tell me no way. Like look at this, a camera, how will the camera come out? Look at the three cameras in the back, one in the front. It, it recognizes you, it unlocks, all this stuff. There's no way, right? But then think through your body. Where did your liver development come from? Where did your heart come from? Imagine by itself, like, like if you talk about evolution, there is no scientific way you can explain the development of the eye. Because the eye, until it can fully see, it has no function. If it's just a blob, there's no function. Right? So it had to have the function of sight for it to develop. Right? You know the minimum gene concept? Right? Wait. No. All right. Oh, well, no, so that. Wait, I just want to make sure I understand. So, so, so let, let, let's look at, let's look at a, a species, right? Let's say a species at a time has no eye. Yeah. Right? Right. And right. then we say there is, there is natural selection. Yeah. Right? Things that you have uh, that you need for survival, then those traits are left and others are go gone, right? Yeah. But an eye that cannot see, if it was not able to see until it was a fully functioning, whether the eyesight was strong or weak is different, mm -hmm. it would have no function. Mm -hmm. So just a blob could not survive for it to then start to have a pupil and then start to develop sight, you see? It would have to have that function of sight mm -hmm. for it to develop, right? And then you can have an eye develop, like you can have stronger eyesight and weaker eyesight, hawks and all that, yes. But the eye had to have been a, a tool of vision for it to be there, right? right? Either there so, were eyes or there were blobs. Exactly, and the blob will have no function. Yeah. So, you see, yeah. this is where you realize that there is a creator, there is a fashioner, there is a developer, right? Even if you talk about the development of, of what they say, and, and again, again, I have a, a executive MBA as well in, in technology management. It's not like I've only been a madrasa. I know all the theories, I discuss these all day long, right? If you look at random mutation, this is what they say, random mutation. That means you should have a horn and you should have feathers and he, we should all be randomly mutated. How does a species randomly mutate the same thing? Like who coordinates that, right? Like if you think that humans should be taller and you feel it's better to be shorter, which way are we gonna gravitate? Who's gonna coordinate that, right? They say, well, it's random. Well, randomly a whole species develops the same thing? Doesn't make sense. Right? And then you should have randomly a lot of illogical, useless things on you. Because it should randomly mutate. It should not mutate in every part of your body is needed. You see your eyebrows? You may never have thought about this. I had a friend, he was doing a barbecue, he burnt off his eyebrows. He couldn't walk in the sun. Right? He had to wear shades because eyebrows blocked. Like, did you ever think about that? No. Right? How did us as a species develop that? How did we all come together and say, hey, we all need eyebrows? Right? We didn't. Allah fashioned this. Right? Think about your cells. Every part of your body is made with the same cells. What about like my appendix? Excellent. Yeah. There are researches right now, and I, I have one if you want. Uh, I mean, I'll make a video I on it. I my appendix. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but <laughs> the, the appendix has a function. 
It right? used to have a function. But Does no, it no, it still has a function. How so? And uh, and I'll send you the research. I'm, I'm again, I'm not a medical doctor, but yeah. they said as a child is developing, there are many harmful things that the appendix stores and then flushes, right? And many times appendixes you, throughout your life will not burst. Sometimes they get they get infected and so on. Mm -hmm. But many scientists are saying till today there is a function, the tailbone. We used to say there's no function for the tailbone. Right now there are research, peer-reviewed scientific journals being written about the, the function of the tailbone. A lot of things in our body we don't know the function of yet. Right? Just but that's don't just, know yet. It's a exactly. Say that yeah. Yeah. For years, yeah. for years, yep. there were parts of the body that we were like, this is just useless. Mm -hmm. And then science catches up to Islam. Islam doesn't catch up to science, right? Now think about other functions in your body. Everything in your body is made of cells. Right? But who ordains, who tells the cell to become a liver or to become skin or to become an eye? Like who programs that? Right? You know, I mean, it, it is illogical to think that a phone can't come by itself, but a human came by itself. Right? Think about this. There are functions in your body that you don't even know about that you need to survive. Right? White blood cells. Like, till today, AI does not cure itself. It does not heal itself. Maybe in the future it will. Like, I'm not going into hypotheticals, but look at how beautifully Allah designed the body. You get cut, you don't even think about it. Blood cells start to scab it up, to attack. You get a temperature because your body's trying to burn off the, the viruses, right? That's amazing. You right now, have your heart's been beating how long? When you're talking to me, you've never even, you haven't even thought about it. Function that goes on. You go to sleep, it still beats. Imagine if you had to make your heart beat, Every time you go to sleep, you'd be dead, mm -hmm. right? Look at all this that Allah has put signs in you that Allah developed you, right? Many times in your life, there will be times that things happen that were against the logical flow of things, right? Miracles that, that, that we then kind of like, yeah, I got lucky. You know, we kind of give it away, right? Imagine, imagine the first babies, right? How would the first baby get nutrition if there was no milk in the mother's breast, right? Like, like we, we as people who study science have to come up with weird theories because we have no answers for that, right? A, a baby cannot get nutrition from grass, right? The, the body system's not ready. So you had to have had a mother with milk for mammals, right? For them to be able to get that, right? And if you didn't have it, it wouldn't develop. There would be no need. If the baby could get nutrition in other ways, then, then evolution would not put milk in the breasts of women. You see, this system had to be designed. And the more you really study it, the more you become a true believer in Allah. It's too perfect. It's too perfect, Everything. exactly. And, and randomness does not bring perfection. I mean, ima imagine if the earth goes off, it's, 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 it's accessed by a couple of inches. Right? We'll burn up or freeze up. Right? But look how Allah put everything in a perfect balance. Look at this. You breathe in oxygen, put out carbon dioxide. Plants take in carbon dioxide, put out oxygen. Perfect balance. We as humans are trying to mess that up right now, <laughs> unfortunately. But how would that balance be? Like how did it randomly get that balance? Like who came, who made that decision? Like humans, uh, we'll take the oxygen plants, we'll take the carbon dioxide. Right? Like a kind of like a like an epiphany, I guess. Yesterday, I was really thinking deep about this. Like the reason of existence of why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would put us in this earth for trial for as a temporary basis. Uh, probably one of the reasons of the wisdom. I can only speculate. Sure. Right? But I was thinking like just looking around. We were at the zoo. So I was looking around at the animals. I was looking at the trees, the plants, all these things. I was just thinking to myself how everything is just subservient to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Of course. They're submissive. They're in a slum. Yep. Right? And for us, the distinction is that we have free will. We have the opportunity to disobey a lot, to go against our natural order. Yep. And everything's natural order is to go submit to Allah. Subhanallah. Right? And perhaps our time here is teaching us that. That what happens yep. when you disobey Allah. We of course. ruin ourselves, we ruin our soul, we ruin the earth that we're on, we ruin I mean, the creation too. Think about you know? everything haram. Yeah. It only harms us, right? If you look at alcohol, if we get drunk all day, every day, it's not going to harm Allah. But look at what happened to society. 
Everybody's like, oh, I don't drink too much. I can control it. But every drunk thinks the same thing. Every drunk driver that got in their car and turned it on and hit somebody and killed them thought, I can handle it. Every drunk that I grew up with that would go home and beat up their children and do these kinds of things thought, I have no problem, right? But Allah knew better. And Allah gave us the choice so you can then appreciate what is right from wrong, right? Imagine if, if we had no boundaries, right? Zina and all of that was just open and nobody cared. Imagine that society would be a horrible society. Nobody would know whose children they are. I mean, you know, you would have no trust in the family. You know, you would have crime rampant because humans by nature, there's, there's two types, right? Some that naturally incline towards good. And those ones you should don't worry about anyway, right? And there are those that if you don't have a rule and regulation, they will incline towards bad. And that's why we have laws, right? But imagine if you could get away with it. Everybody, many people, many people would incline towards that bad. Society would be corrupt. You, you wouldn't even have idea of being moral, right? Because Allah tells us right and wrong in the Quran. But if we take that away, what's morality? Right? Changes. You, it Today's changes. Okay I tomorrow. mean, Hitler you don't have and like the people, basis. they don't have a big no Hitler and the people, and, and, and you know, people think, oh, Hitler was just one guy. No, he had, and he, there are pictures of Nazi supporters in America that loved him right? before the war. There are many, until today there are, but there were millions. Millions of people in Germany did support him. It's not like it was just him and a couple of guys, right? And in his mind, conducting the horrible crime of the Holocaust or killing homosexuals or uh, the Polacks or whatever, whoever else, the Polish people, sorry, right? That he committed genocides on, to him was, was perfectly moral. He justified it. Look at Mao, right? And, and Mao was an atheist, right? He killed more people than Hitler. Look at Stalin. Star Stalin. Stalin was an atheist. In his mind, it was morally correct to kill, I don't know what, 20 or 200 million, depending on historians that he killed, right? But this is where Islam stops us from that. Islam tells us you kill one person unjustly, unjustly, it's as if you've killed the whole mankind. Like Allah made haram the blood of the Muslim. Allah has put these rules and regulations. Today, many times, I could rip people off. Like I could come on camera and be like, yo, send me like all these wood and Sam, like the way they do when they rip people off with their fake fundraising. I could do that. I could be like, send money and the Muslims are wonderful people, they'll send me money. But Alhamdulillah, I don't, I don't take a penny out here. Why? Because I know my Allah will reward me for the good I do and Allah will question me. So if somebody does donate to our channel, we have to be careful. Okay, we buy books, we buy things, we, we do da'wah stuff. None of us, none of us here do uh, it for a salary, right? Because we know Allah will hold us accountable. Even if we pay somebody to develop our website or, or to do editing or something, we, we take accountability, right? Everybody, why? Because we know every penny is an amana that Allah will question us, right? But these other people like Jerry Farwell and all these uh, Christian mega church guys, mega church guys yeah. they know they're ripping people off. They know they don't need two, three hundred thousand dollars to buy a van, right? They know, they know that they're doing it for the money. They know, they know it's all about the money. They know Islam is the truth. Many of them in the heart, they know. That's why even when they get proven wrong, they won't admit it, right? Because they don't have taqwa, right? They don't believe that, that they have to answer to Allah. But as a Muslim, when you believe that you have to answer to Allah, that's what puts society in a place of peace, right? That's why atheism can never bring morality because then everybody has their own yardstick, right? Is it immoral to marry your dog? Is it immoral to uh, kill somebody if you feel they're a bad person? Right? Where, where is the yardstick? Everybody has their own, right? But Alhamdulillah that Allah blessed us with the Quran that is from the Creator. Who knows best how we should live? Our Creator, right? Every one of us has shortcomings. Every one of us sins. Every one of us makes mistakes. But as long as we go back to Allah and ask for forgiveness and ask for guidance, this is what's important, right? Because if you, if you develop the new AI robot that's going to build cars better and safer, right? Who will know best how to operate it? You will. You know, you're not just going to be like, right? You're not just going to be like, this is this amazing technology I developed, but I'll tell you what, I'm just going to give it to people and be like, do whatever you want with it, right? Imagine if we didn't know how to use phones and, and Apple and Samsung didn't give us any idea, right? People would be drying it in the microwave, people would be, in a, you know, all kinds of things because you don't know. That's why when you buy a phone, it comes with a manual. I mean, that's why you have videos that explain, you know, that's why 
I work in med devices, we send trainers to hospitals to explain how to use that technology, right? And that is why Allah sent the Quran as our manual and sent the Anbiya as trainers to tell us you, we are His creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how should we live? He tells us. And when we implement that, we have peace. Like the time of Umar ibn al-Aziz and the time when you have... And when we don't, when we misuse it for political gains and for politics, then we see the fitan in the world, right? When we disregard it or we misuse it because we know the hukam, but we want to, for money or power, we want to misuse it, then, then it's not going to work. You know? A medicine is only as good as the, as the way you take it, right? If you've got the antibiotic that's going to help you, but you take it and just put it in your ear, it's not going to do it, right? Yeah. How does Islam work? When you obey Allah in the way shown to us by the Prophet Wasallam, that's when it works. Okay, so, why did Allah, not why? What is the wisdom behind you, can ask? Yeah, what's the wisdom behind, what, what is the Islamic perspective on, or why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the Quran as a revelation, as opposed to, like, uh, you know, letting us know in a different way. Broadcasting it in all of our sure. broadcasting. Yeah, sure, excellent. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his hikmah, his wisdom that is known to Allah. But I can show some benefits that I would see, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wanted, he could put a big sign in the sky that says, I am Allah, believe in me. Right? But where's the test? Right? For example, uh, I'm sure you're both very educated men, right? I'm sure you've sat through tests. Somewhere in school, had a yeah, test. Yeah. All right, I got it. Right? So, if they want it, they could give you, here's your test and here's your answer sheet. Or here's your test and just put this little piece in your ear and the, and the, and the instructor is going to tell you the answers as you go. Right? But then there's no test. The test is, here's the book, here's the class, learn it, be strong on it, and then your test will come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to us the Quran before we were even in this dunya. He asked us when we were souls, right? Am I your Rabb? We said yes. But then Allah, He takes that memory away from us. But He tells us about it because that's the test. And then He puts us in this world. And in this world, you have choice. But out of His mercy, even though just from seeing, like you said, I mean, just from seeing the animal at the zoo, you saw the hikmah. But out of His mercy, He sends us many revelations. We mess the revelations up, He sends us another one, another one, until the final, right? He, we send one prophet, people don't follow him, He shows us miracles, right? People see Ibrahim not get burned by the fire. People see Musa Islam split the ocean. People see Isa ibn Maryam walking on water. People see the Prophet splitting the moon. But humans are like this. Like, you know, even when we see a miracle, a lot of times we're like, nah, it was just a, uh, it was a meteorite, you know, just a flood, you know. Yeah, you know. So then Allah sends us such a miracle, the Quran, that is with us, that we can read, that we can see. And in every generation, the Quran will speak to its generation in its language. When the Arabs were good at our linguistics, it spoke to them in the linguistics. Today, when we're all about science and science, we see scientific facts in the Quran that Muhammad could not have known, right? Something that the Sahaba would not have felt and understood, but we see it because the Quran is the guidance till the day of judgment, right? So that is the hikmah, the wisdom, why it was revealed and why it's still with us, right? Now the choice is ours. Uh, in that light then, right, because of the, the format of the Quran, right? Uh, it's a book form. What if there's people out there, there's definitely people out there who have sure. met somebody uh, met somebody who doesn't, doesn't even know what the Quran is. Sure. How can we hold them accountable for Excellent. understanding? There are people who have heard the message, right? Like right here, you have this brother Mujahid. He had nothing, he had no knowledge of the Islam until he met a Muslim. And Alhamdulillah, he came and now he's learning the Quran. You have this brother Victor, he became Muslim right here at the park. Now he's learning the Quran. You have this brother Art right there with the backpack. He just recently became Muslim. So these people, they were not raised in an environment of knowing the Quran, but now they have come and they with us. We have lessons, we have teaching them Quran and Hadith and Fiqh and all of that, right? All of these people can come and learn. And that's why we're here, to be that mean. This is why we say to Jamaat Tabliq and others that they need to be that means of these kuffar learning. That's why Allah ordained upon us to go and convey this message. 
right? But let's say there is somebody in a remote island. Uh, say like China, where they have. I mean, like, China, you, know, you have tons of Muslims. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, but we Every have city. Areas where there's just oh, religious yeah, yeah. persecution, no, no, right? There is, but so but they know the Islam, right? Yeah. And and in like like in the uh, Uyghur areas, may Allah free our brothers and sisters from the genocide. We make du'a for our Muslim brothers and sisters in China. But even then, they're they're Muslim. Alhamdulillah, and there are people becoming Muslim there. In Shanghai, in in the major cities, there are masajid, and there are people becoming Muslim. But let's say there's a remote island, and a guy lives on it. He's never met a Muslim. He never heard the Quran. He never heard about Allah. But he sees the signs of Allah, right? And he believes in Allah, but he doesn't believe in the Quran, right? He is from the people of Fitra. We call it Ahlul Fitra, right? Allah will judge him on his. If he believed in Allah from what he could, from what he knew, he would be from the people of Jannah. When the Quran didn't reach him, he's not responsible for it. That's why Allah sent a Nabi to all the areas. He sent prophets to all the people. So they would, then they would know the message. And if anybody's between the prophets, like they're between their times and they never heard the message, they are the people of Fitrah. See? But if they've heard the message, then they are responsible for it. Fighting the same Alhamdulillah. So earlier we gave that like that analogy, analogy uh, test, right? So why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing us uh, for our uh, Again, this is the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? We can't ask Allah why. But from the wisdoms of it is to appreciate what you have, right? Why, why do they test us in university, right? So that we can appreciate that degree and people can know that you have accomplished something, right? Like if I, if I tell my kids, you don't have to do any chores, you don't have to do good in school, here's all the money you want. Right? They will never appreciate money. But if I tell them, no, you want to get, you want to get, you want to go buy an Xbox, let me see your 4.0. Right? Then when they get that Xbox, they appreciate it, right? Yeah. If I tell them, look, you want to you wanna go and uh, buy that new iPhone 13, make sure that you, know, you, you do all your chores, memorize your Quran, do all of this, then, then they, they work hard for it, they appreciate it. Otherwise, imagine if, if somebody doesn't know the value of money, right, of, of cash, and they just find it sitting around, right? I mean, if, like a little kid. They'll probably make planes with it, you know, wipe their butt with it. They don't know, right? But when you go and you work hard and you, you know, you, you learn and you get a degree and then you use it and then you get that paycheck, you're like, Alhamdulillah, right? So if Jannah is just given free, then where is, you wouldn't appreciate it. Again, we don't ask Allah why. Allah did what He wants. But from the wisdoms that I see in it is from this and there are many others. Yeah. Good? Awesome. Alhamdulillah. We appreciate you guys coming out all Thank the way from you. New York. Thank you, Thank you so very much. much. Inshallah, like, keep up with our videos. A lot of our questions. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. A lot more than I realized. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. May Allah bless you guys and keep up with the One Message Foundation, but also the Rabat channel. We have durus and things. We go through a lot of these in our lessons and things. So inshallah, we'll benefit you. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much. Salam wa salam wa barakatuh. Salam wa salam wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. أرجو من الله العلي غفران كل الزلل ورؤية الرحيم ووجهه العظيم وصحبة النبي الطاهر الزكي يا رب صلي أبدا على النبي أحمد وآله وصحبه وتابع لهديه ما غرد الحمام وسبح الأنام ما غرد الحمام وسبح الأنام